Let's go to Doug and Joe Hagman of Hagman and Hagman, father and son investigators, with all their great sources, a lot of great intel over the years we've gotten from them on what they see coming in the new year. Uh, I see economic warfare, maybe false flags to blame domestic groups. They're definitely, I remember you were on with us two years ago, and I, and I didn't roll my eyes, Doug, because you'd given me a lot of intel that, that, that really turned out to be accurate over the years. But you said from your FBI and Homeland Security sources, they said the Justice Department is going to go to the next level, even though uh, they didn't think they could get it going with the whole Zimmerman thing, that they're going to go to race war and then war on the police. And then that has now happened. Give us the latest intel on what's unfolding. Alex, uh, thanks for having us on the show again. And, you know, a, a very good clip, by the way, from uh, the 1963 movie, uh, the, the bait of fish, the uh, Siamese fighting fish, obviously puff up when they see another uh, male of the species. So this is what's happening here. Perfect uh, correlation of what's happening here. But uh, to, to cut to the real uh, heart of the matter here, aside from people like uh, Michael Grunewald from uh, Politico saying everything's awesome, or reporting everything's awesome. What we're seeing happen here today, I believe, based on our sources, uh, in the larger sense, and then we, we can, in the macro sense, and then we can uh, 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 burrow it down. But in the macro sense, what we've got is uh, geopolitically, we've got Russia and America at odds, and an economic warfare very similar to what we saw with America and, and Japan prior to World War II. Uh, you had the, the economic sanctions against Japan, the embargo, and bam, it turned into Pearl Harbor and a hot war. I think that we're, we're seeing that run up right now. The parallels are, are just indeed incredible to that, to, to the 1940-41 uh, uh, era time period. And uh, if we keep in mind, uh, Alex, that right now, well, as of 2013, for example, oil, natural gas accounted for 68, well, almost 70 percent of Russia's total export revenues for 2013. So what we're doing is essentially, and we've got a three-pronged approach against Russia, we're, we're hitting them economically with the oil and gas uh, glut prices, whatever you want to call it, via Saudi Arabia, the Saudi agenda. You've got the attack on the ruble asymmetrically against Russia, and then you've got the uh, the more open and overt warfare, the uh, lines of battle, which include Syria and Ukraine. So we're, we're actually giving them a three-pronged kind of battlefield, which is going on. That's the macro of everything, I believe. So while people are rejoicing over a $2.38 gallon of gas, people have got to understand where that's coming from and why we've got that. And having said all of that, uh, drilling down domestically, you've got this, the very same globalists who are, are aching out, and Joe did a lot of research on this, aching out the geopolitical affairs. You've got this very same globalist, and our sources are telling us in person and, and in other means that uh, not only is the domestic situation with respect to race wars going to increase, there will be uh, 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 just a full court press for additional race wars. We saw that happen nearby Ferguson over, over this last holiday. And I think what's gonna happen is more and more, you're gonna have police being shot at, police being killed. This is gonna usher in a, a new level of draconian laws against the citizens. And by the way, the Sony hack, uh, if I can just reference that too, and I don't wanna seem like I'm going all over the place. The Sony hack does figure prominently into this with cybersecurity. Stay there. I want to come back and get Joe's take uh, geopolitically and economically with some of the data as well. We will continue straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Infowars.com is the main site. Backup mirror, prisonplanet.com. And you can also be a subscriber if you want to see the nightly news and more at prisonplanet.tv. Stay with us. We'll be back straight ahead. Yes, family and friends are gathering to give gifts and wish health and security. But why not enhance cell phone and wireless device security all year with Block It Pocket? A family-owned American business, we now have two spectacular holiday specials. Find them now at our new website, blockitpocket.com, or call 888-315-9618. Hurry, holiday special ends Christmas Day. Give the gift of security from blockitpocket.com, wishing you health, freedom, and liberty. The CD 
CDC just announced flu vaccines may have the wrong strain of flu virus. You may not be protected. Whatever your lifestyle, your immune system is critical and Immudine provides your immune support. Doctor recommended, stimulant free and not found in pharmacies. Go to Immudine.com to find out more or to place an order or call 866-257-8668. That's I-M-M-U-D-Y-N-E.com or 866-257-8668. Remember, Immudine is key support for your immune system. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality Silver Bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your Silver Bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. What good is a Big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey water filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. If you have candida overgrowth, just taking antifungal agents or starving yourself of sweets does not address the cause. Candida overgrowth is the result of a toxic, damaged, acidic, low oxygen, and inflamed tissue environment. The goal should be to remove the toxins, heal damaged tissues, restore healthy pH, eliminate inflammation, and feed beneficial bacteria. Previous usage of antibiotics or steroids or exposure to mercury or other toxins can damage many cells in the GI tract and body that make you prone to candida overgrowth. Removing toxins and healing tissues should be the goal. One World Whey is a whey protein food that supports detoxification, repair of tissues, and elimination of inflammation, healthy pH, and growth of beneficial bacteria. One World Whey is duly reformulated to be higher in protein and lower in carbohydrate. We believe One World Whey is an excellent food to support your efforts to create a healthy internal body environment. Call 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorldWhey.com. Coming up in the next segment, we're going to open the phones up on any question, comment, or topic you'd like to raise for our guest. But undoubtedly, the world is going into a state of artificially created destabilization so a handful of large financial interests to can consolidate power we have major global government treaties going through right now that congress isn't even allowed to see meanwhile in the last piece of funding legislation that passed a few weeks ago pension fund rating laws changed so they can still private pensions not just public laws changed so they can sign everybody on to unlimited derivatives, bigger than the banker bailout of 2008. Huge things are happening. And then meanwhile, we have the article up on Infowars.com with the video and photos. Black Lives Matter protests smash up Oakland Christmas tree. Vandals say cops should have no time off in violent demonstrations. 
Another story, spoiled brats complain about Christmas gifts, stupid parents. What's going to happen when a depression hits? I don't think there's a question of if, just when, with all the spoiled brats in this country. That's just some of the stories up on Infowars.com. This is a short segment with uh, Hagman and Hagman. They're with us for about 10, 15 minutes into the next hour, Doug and Joe Hagman. Um, I want to go back, and then I want to get some of the economic data that um, your son uh, Joe has, because I know he does a lot of the deep research. But, Doug, specifically, you kept harping two years ago that, that their main strategy was race war. We'd, we'd caught the Justice Department involved, stirring up the, some of the riots, uh, smaller riots that happened. Um, they were, of course, upset about the fact they were small. Uh, not to sting people, that'd be bad enough, but to actually get it going. What does Obama and the people he's got running his operation think they're going to do by stirring up race riots in this country. What's the end game of that? Because I know you have some sources in Homeland Security that you said are really freaked out about this and this attempt to uh, play the public off against uh, local law enforcement. What is the end game and how is that going for them? You know, Alex, um, from my perspective and from my sources, it's uh, the end game objective here is to uh, first of all create the chaos, create the problem, and then of course come in with the solution. And the solution is going to be a very large scale, uh, uh, draconian style. Uh, even a martial law scenario type of thing to to really oppress the people and, and take away our rights. And that's, that's what you said two years ago, and now it's happening. And, well, yes, and geographically, in, geogra in, in little pockets in the in that around the country. But the people at DHS, according to my DHS source, which is a, a different one than, than uh, two years ago, I got handed off uh, in that respect, is saying, look, you know, they are getting very impatient with respect to the fact that this is not happening fast enough. So uh, they very well might create or exacerbate already existing situations so they can advance this objective. And I know Joe's talked to um, my sources as well and does his, own, does his own research to the extent that our both of our sources, both of our uh, uh, research does match up. And, and this is coming, Alex. It, and as you've pointed out many times, this is coming indeed. And it's to divide well, and conquer from within. Well, sure. I mean, we've caught the Justice Department stirring it up over and over again with the controlled media. So that's proof right there. But the fact that your source has said this was the plan two years ago and we now see it being executed... I think the good news is is that Obama is, is, I guess, frustrated then that it's not happening on a big enough scale. I guess the public's too smart for that? Well, yeah, and, and Joe was talking about this earlier. Uh, it's the people, the alternative media right now is really making a difference in terms of people's, the, the people who are awake, people like you and, and, and us and talking to people, are. It's, it's starting to make a difference. And it's and, Quite frankly, it's starting to hack off the people uh, that are trying to push forward this agenda. So, you know, now you can throw in the cybersecurity bill on top of this, or you know, the, the Sony hack, which will perhaps lead to a cybersecurity bill. Joe's done a lot of research on. I this. want to get your take. We're going to come back and throw it to Joe on the Sony hack and on the economic data that on the oil war that's going on with the Saudis, the Russians, and the U.S. But, but briefly. In the minute we've got before we go to break, any other intel on the civil unrest that the globalists are trying to stir up? Watch this spring and this summer. That's uh, words directly from my source of DHS. It's going to get very hot in this country if they have their way. More, more cops getting executed? Well, that's a given. And it's going to lead up to a uh, summer of discontent, summer of 1968-style. They're looking for a tipping point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Al Gore said two years ago, we needed an Arab Spring here in America. Yeah. yeah. Well, he sits in his mansion with armed guards. He wants a bunch of teenagers to go around burning stuff down and shooting cops in the head. I mean, that's what an Arab Spring would be here, folks. With a bunch of stupid leftists running around shooting people. We'll be back. Stay with us. This makes me want to throw up. We're on the march. World order, globalist, police state, running man takeover that we're firmly against. We're against the federalization, militarization of police, them being trained to go after constitutionalists, veterans, gun owners, law-abiding citizens. And I wrote the book. I don't say that figuratively. I say that in reality on the police state. I made the films on the police state. That's because I'm against a police state. But being against a police state 
like North Korea or Mexico does not mean you're against the police. The final agreement, the, uh, the final ingredient of a police state is a civil war, a destabilization campaign. More students have now come up missing, being kidnapped. Others have been dug up dead in Mexico. Major capitals in Mexico, state capitals, have fallen. Universities are on fire. That has been orchestrated from without to a great extent. This is a destabilization campaign. It can be done here. The controllers will sit back overseas and watch this unfold. That's why we're trying to expose it. The toll-free number to join us if you've got any questions or comments for our guest on the topics we've raised today, 800-259-9231. First-time callers again, 800-259-9231. On this December 26 Worldwide Live Edition. I'll also be back this Sunday, Lord willing. Don't want to tempt fate, but I intend to be live this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And please, never forget they're trying to pass SOPA and CISPA again. Never forget they're licking their chops and they want to shut up the people they disagree with. Never forget that we have a chance to beat the globalists. That's why they want to shut us up. So your prayers, your support, spreading the word about the broadcast isn't needed it's absolutely essential you are the info war you are the resistance so i salute all of you out there as we accelerate towards 2015. okay going back to doug hagman and joe hagman of the northeast intelligence network uh go ahead get into uh the data that you had joe uh break that down and then we're going to start going to some phone calls i also want you guys to raise any topics that that are front and center for you instead of me just asking the questions so you guys have the floor Thanks, Alex. Uh, what you said right at the top of the hour when you brought us on was, was very accurate. You know, they're destabilizing the economies in a way that they destabilize the governments of Syria and Libya. Um, they're destabilizing these countries' economies for a fiscal reconsolidation under um, the IMF and World Bank to um, have this global uh, economic rebalancing act that we're seeing here in, in 2015. And I think, I hope I'm wrong, but I think we will see it in a big way in 2015. A lot of their monetary policy seems to shift towards more extreme uh, monetary policy to, to tighten certain economies, to loosen other economies like we're seeing with Russia. In an IMF document from 2014 and a World Bank document, both they talk about the upcoming Russian inflation and how to manage it in a way through fiscal policy that doesn't allow for rampant inflation, but they're going to control it in a way where they're strengthening, they say, the Russian economy and rebalancing it with less government control. And that's what they say here in their uh, International Monetary Fund World Economic Outlook from 2014. And the, the World Bank has a, a similar publication from the same month. It's a global economic rebalancing act. And they're getting their pieces in place for what they want to do in the next phase of their initiative. Yeah, and, and Alex, this amazed me the most. When he brought me these documents and he said, look, everything that's happening right now has been laid out and planned by the globalists. And here it is. That's but, what's so frustrating. I'm trying to give you guys the floor because you got a lot of key data to get out. But exactly, 95% of what we cover and you cover is just an admission they just call it good. They go, we're helping Russia when we plunge their ruble. We're helping when we start cutting their, you know, their exports off. We're helping. It's, it's this sick speech, but they admit it's all being orchestrated. Go ahead. No, it's just I, wanna, I just want to back him up. When he brought this to me, I, I looked at it and I thought, well, it's exactly what's happening now, written two years ago, telling us exactly what they were going to do. And it's, and as you say, it's very frustrating to us when we're looking at this and we're handing this out, this information out and saying, look, this was planned. This is orchestrated. None of this is coincidence or by accident. This is all orchestrated. And, and it's economic warfare. And, and, and Alex, I don't think people understand how critical and, and how deadly, potentially deadly, this, this warfare is. I mean, we could, we could be looking at nukes i mean at the worst bad worst case scenario oh yeah here's the headline uh, right now russia receives military doctrine changes it lists nato buildup as number one threat i mean russia is starting to go from a very passive role into a very aggressive role right now yeah president putin uh 
approve this new military doctrine just today, listing NATO and the U.S. Uh, as enemies and as um, security concerns. So there you go. The Cold War is back on, but now it's hot, and now Russia has announced it's, it's getting ready to deploy uh, its new supersonic uh, nuke-tipped ICBMs. Exactly. And Alex, when we look at this, we look at this, Joe and I do, through the prism of uh, Syria, for example, because one of the biggest, and I'll I would say this, everyone keep their eyes still glued on Syria, because that is still the prize here. Syria, the destabilization takeover of Syria, and then ripping Turkey out of NATO and siding with Russia will be the uh, somewhat of the collateral effect of that. So the bottom line here is we're going to see a lot of, what we're seeing is economic warfare right now with some hot wars by proxy. However, um, when this happens, I do believe the gloves will be off and we're going to see. That's right. The average person's watching ESPN right now where guys are wearing suits and ties, all real excited about football games. While meanwhile, it's well known that U.S. Special Forces have been forced to be in there, and they're very upset about it, advising the extremists uh, that run the Ukrainian government to attack the Russians. And I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm not Russian or Ukrainian, but the West and George Soros have bragged they started it, and in my my book, it's not right to come up to somebody's border and start bloodying their nose and then not expecting them to retaliate. How do you guys expect Russia to retaliate in an asymmetrical proxy war way against being encircled and being messed with? Well, I think it was Wired Magazine who said 2015 would be the year of the hack. And I see this, um, you know, the Sony hack as a, as a run up, as a testing um per se, a pilot program to their, what they call the phantom menace uh, technique in warfare. And this is what they're going to do is use proxies to hack. Uh, they, we know that the medical industry is a soft target as they list it. And we have, you know, a, a huge push into this e-commerce. We have e-banking now. Everybody does their banking online. And, you know, through economic warfare, they could hack bank accounts. They could hack uh, pr private, public, government or under the, the guise and with government cooperation, make it appear as though they did. Uh, just like we saw with the Sony hack. They were blaming it on North Korea. Um, investigation showed North Korea had nothing to do with it, other than possibly being a proxy nation, which was used as an intermediary between who did attack them. And, and uh, so, you know, what they call the phantom menace is a, is a uh, kind of like terrorism. You can't point a finger at it, you can't identify an individual, but... Uh, they get a general idea to to make up this false enemy, and this is what they're planning on doing in 2015. Uh, and this will push in what you talked about, the cybersecurity uh, bills and the internet security bills. Uh, this will strengthen the public's uh, backing of these bills once they realize that their economic, uh, their economies, their own bank accounts aren't safe, their health records aren't safe. As we move towards a, a push on electronic health records. Uh, the American people are going to, the more hacks we see, the more the American people are going to push to have these uh, laws implemented, further restricting the freedom of the Internet and uh, policing it more. Yeah, and, and you know, Alex, if I can interject one thing, I go, I'll go on record today right now by saying this. We saw what they did with the film Innocence of Muslims and using that as the pretext for the, for what happened in Benghazi. The fingerprints of the CIA and in, specific, and in particular John O'Brennan all over that through proxy companies and NGOs. I'm going to tell you right here, right now, if you, if uh, uh, it, based on my investigation and research, supplemented by Joe here, I got to tell you, uh, look inward, look at our own intelligence agencies with respect to the Sony hack to pass um, the Cybersecurity Act and other draconian legislation against the internet and against the uh, internet, uh, uh, well, against the internet as a whole. And as Joe said, uh, and, and look for more soft target attacks or attacks against soft targets in 2015, in particular, the healthcare system that will usher in uh, an entirely new type of uh, uh, arrangement with respect to how exactly they'll claim obamacare is not working well because of hacks you can see how their mindset works what about physical attacks they say they're gearing up for patriots to blow stuff up with zero evidence i mean i see them in the movies the culture priming the public mind for domestic physical uh, attacks bombs truck bombs mass shootings to be blamed on the globalist opposition the liberty movement any in, uh, information on that 
Yeah, I mean, uh, we see with what they're trying to do by stirring up racial tensions in different parts of the country, and we talked about how they're trying to reach a tipping point. I think that the American people are going to come together rather than uh, pull each other apart, and they're going to see that their options are, are far and fewer to get this tipping point reached. So I believe they will pull out as much, uh, you know, we saw with ISIS uh, when Syria wasn't, we weren't, the public would not allow the, the government to strike Syria. And they repackaged the threat into the ISIS threat, threw out a couple of beheading videos, and now we have this huge enemy ISIS that we never see about or hear about unless you know they have some kind of propaganda video or, or a piece of news that is out there. I think they'll just repackage the threat and uh, continue to push until they reach a, an emergence or a crisis point where they think that they can gain the upper hand and turn it into a, a full-blown tipping point and into a a crisis that they won't allow to go to waste. They're looking for that one incident. That's all think, they need. Think Oklahoma City style operation to, to blame the Patriot groups and those Second Amendment bitter clingers, if you will. It's so obvious, though. Now, false flag has entered the vernacular of the military, the police, the public. Uh, they've got to be scared. Every time they pull a false flag now, our people are there with cameras. We keep catching them. That's why they've moved on to other types of economic and propaganda false flags. But they're licking their chops. They just be, better be really careful the next one they pull because we're going to be there day one holding their feet to the fire. Everybody knows who has a motive to blow stuff up and blame the patriots. Everybody knows the, the whole political structure. Republican leadership and Democratic leadership are against the liberty movement because we are the people that know the Federal Reserve is private. We're the people that know where the bodies are buried. We know how stuff works. We know how to tie our shoelaces and wipe our noses. We're nothing special. We just know how real politics works. And it's that knowledge that scares them. Well, that knowledge has now been diversified to where it's, it's in tens of millions of people. And we've got humat or human intelligence organically operating everywhere. Uh, that is basically unstoppable. I don't know what the system thinks they're going to pull because now every angle we've got covered, every angle where they're countering them day one, and I don't mean my show or your show. I mean, it is frightening how powerful the liberty movement is and how it's exponentially growing. That's really got to scare the system. But, but, but you know, Alex, they can actually change history. They can create false news reports. Uh, Joe was getting into, into that, how the, the plans, the infrastructure are, are, is laid for that. Uh, right now, we're doing investigations, attempting to get uh, documentation. And this is something else, by the way, um, uh, with respect to Obama, who Obama is, re receiving or looking at uh, various uh, uh, documents that, that were once that once existed, no longer exist. I mean, they can destroy documents, change documents at will. It seems like it's just an amazing thing what's taking place with respect to the... Well, they're creating a fog of war, a fog of confusion. But at the end of the day, there's no confidence in them. But Joe, get into specifically, uh, they announced last year, to quote, counter the Drudge Report and others, they're going to launch uh, intelligence operations domestically for disinfo. Um, but still, I don't see that working. You're right. They can memory hold stuff. They can plant stuff on Facebook or Twitter. They can create fake videos, fake audios, edit things. Uh, what specifically are you getting at? There's a, a new publication out titled State Actor Threats in 2025. And in this document, they talk about generating false uh, news reports. They talk about computer graphics and how the... Um, technology has increased so much over the years that through artificial intelligence and, cyber and computer graphics, they'll be able to show U.S. troops committing acts of war or show U.S. leaders or other people saying things that they never said, um, creating these you know fake videos, having the media companies report on them as news, only to later come out and say that they were uh, lies. This there he is, Mad Dog Ben Richards, the brutal slayer of 100 men, women, and children in Bakersfield. And they show the footage of Schwarzenegger committing the atrocity when really he tried to stop the atrocity in The Running Man. The Running Man is now here. And again, give folks the name of that U.S. government document you just read. It is called the State Actors Threats in 2025. State Actor Threats 2025. And remember, anything they say 2025 is now. They always say it's out there. It's not scare the public. And that, that's a seven-year-old document, basically, that's been out there for a long time, that's been buried underneath all kinds of other documentation. It was actually uh, initially submitted in 2007. And Air Force War College, yeah. 
Yeah, but, but reformulated now to, uh, to, to to the current. So it, it's interesting. The abstract and the, and the contents have, have been updated, and, and I would urge everyone to, to research that. You know, definitely because it's it's really extremely. I think the bottom line is we are all now in Buck Rogersville. We're now in a science fiction movie. Oh, yeah. With the brain uploads and the and the passive brain scanners and the face scanners and the and the GMOs and the nanotech and all of it, this is out of control. I, I mean, the world is out of control, and the government's busy worrying about Christians that own guns who aren't criminals. I mean, that shows you how crazy the elite are. That they're so evil, they're worried about moral people. Exactly, and I'm not sure. I'm not so sure that De Blasio from New York and and even Obama and Holder, uh, Obama to a lesser extent, but but perhaps Holder and De Blasio expected the blowback uh, that they got with respect to the uh, uh, to their policy. So, I, you know, the the objectives always. And Joe and I were talking about this, where the objectives are always the same: the racial warfare, the racial tensions, the divide and conquer with from within. I mean, it's it's always there, but you know, we're I I, I think through the alternative media we are actually pushing toward um uh, educating people and getting people a little and bit by more. the way the pentagon um hillary clinton the white house the think tanks all admit that what they call liberty-based truth-based media is really hurting them i mean they admit we're hurting them so so that should be some positive news because the reason we're hurting them is we're decompartmentalizing these agencies where people are in the agencies, they have part of the info, we're, de we're decompartmentalizing from the outside, they're able to see we're telling the truth, which then causes our credibility to go up, then we start getting fed more intel, the people inside start resisting more, and then that puts the brakes in a peaceful sabotage on the system. This hour brought to you by InfidelBodyArmor.com. When it hits the fan, don't be left without the body armor that will save your life. With prices starting at just $374.99 and ships free. Get yours at InfidelBodyArmor.com. Just won't quit. Hi, Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Is it time to convert paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver yet? Get our 10 Reasons book free. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. We've had an amazing year here at Supernatural Silver. We've truly enjoyed the fantastic response from thousands of people as they've tried our extraordinary product. And we're thrilled at the life-changing results people have. Our company email is continually full of happy, satisfied customers who thank us for the help they've received from Supernatural Silver. This holiday season, as you think of gifts to give your loved ones, consider giving Supernatural Silver a gift that can help provide good health and and wellness, a gift that can change lives and make a real difference in a world where we are constantly exposed to dangerous health threats. Give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance. Give Supernatural Silver. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code HOLIDAY2014 for 30% off. And this holiday season, we wish you and yours the blessings of peace and good health from all of us here at SupernaturalSilver.com. All we are is 
watchman on the wall here alerting the public to the general tyranny. What you do about it is up to you. But I know this, standing up saying no will have an effect overall. It's really just that simple. None of us have to save the world by ourselves. We've all just got to try to get informed and inform others. And we will certainly uh, dial back a lot of this tyranny. Our guest will be with us 20 minutes the next hour. Then we're doing some special reports on the interview and breaking that down. I want to go to Derek, Eleanor, Chris, Bill, Denise, and others. Derek from Wyoming, you're on the air with our guest. What do you have to say? Hey, Alex, thanks for having me on. Thanks to the Hagman guys. Say it's, uh, I'll just have to say this is good to be saved. I got saved about four years ago. And I think, you know, with this, uh, everything that's going on, it's much easier to share the true gospel of Christ. And, you know, um, I'm very excited about what's going on. Um, it's not in a good way, I guess, but, but I, you know, if we know this history, truly, we can paint a geopolitical picture that's so dark, there is only one light. And a lot of these churches are so state-run, so counterfeit, and I find them in smaller and smaller places, uh, and men of God, true men of God are very frustrated, and some of them don't want to look at it, some of these smaller pastors and such, and they know a lot of this is true. Well, and I think you're really hitting the nail on the head here. That one of our biggest problems is state-run media, state-run churches, the faith-based initiative, things like that. I appreciate your call. Let me get our guest take on uh, that whole agenda to turn the churches into nothing but government mouthpieces. Absolutely. And this is where both pastors and congregants need to understand that reading you know, the word themselves, doing the research themselves, whether it's in scripture or in world events, is essential. No one can depend on another person for their information or, or their learning. And in doing so, we forfeit, you know, uh, so much. So we have to continue to strive to learn um, on our own. And we can't put that burden on anybody else or expect anybody else to tell us the whole truth. We need to seek ourselves. Uh, that's very important. All right, let's go to another caller here. Uh, Bill in Florida, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, Alex, thanks for taking my call. Big fan. Thank you, brother. Uh, I, just want, I just wanted to know if you guys have heard about the FBI Memphis Division issuing a warning to local police about an ISIS threat to blow up the Memphis-Arkansas uh, bridge spanning the Mississippi River this month. Yeah, well, actually, we've, we've been following a couple of FBI bulletins. Uh, we belong to uh, the National Counterterrorism Officers Association. We get the, the inside track on various threats. And i got to tell you, the ISIS threat in America, whether it's the Hoover Dam or Las Vegas or New York or Los Angeles, I mean, pick a place, pick a, a scenario. It's there. It's out there. And it seems like a lot of these are... Uh, well, they're issued with less than credible, perhaps, information, and maybe, as they put it, with an overabundance of caution. However, uh, there's really, we've seen nothing credible in terms of, uh, a, of a serious terrorist-type uh, attack. However, however, the southern, poor, su southern border, the very poor southern border, has let a lot of uh, state actors in, including but not limited to ISIS and others. So, I mean, it's 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 really a multi-dimensional or a multi-level chess game at play here. Put it to you this way, in my view, if ISIS is running around taking down countries, killing hundreds of thousands of people, why wouldn't they be attacking us when the border is open and we know they're coming in unless they're being held on a tight leash by the West that helped get them funded and helped them stand up, helped them get their operations rolling? Doesn't mean they're totally controlled, but they were fed and coddled and you know raised like a bucket of rattlesnakes before they were dumped on us. And they have been deployed into the U.S. along with other sleeper groups that will then be activated by criminal groups in the global combine and the terrorists that will attack us, even when we'll never even know the big picture. You agree with that um, breakdown, Doug? Oh, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, I could not have said that better. And, and that's, uh, and I'm sure, Joe, I think you're echoing I want to get Joe's take on it in 60 seconds. A third hour coming up. We're going to continue with phone calls. Uh, thank you, Bill. Chris, Eleanor, Denise, and many others, your calls straight ahead. We're live on the 26th day of December. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. 
InfoWarsLife.com. Check it out today. I have set out to bring you the most hardcore, cutting-edge supplements and nutraceuticals, bar none. And that's what you'll find at InfoWarsLife.com. We have rejected, literally, hundreds of products from the InfoWars Life line because they are not of the very highest quality or because they're not 100% organic or because they don't pass all of the strictest toxicology tests there are that we have listed at InfoWarsLife.com. Whether it's Survival Shield Nascent Iodine or DNA Force, Super Male Vitality, Super Female Vitality, Lung Cleanse, Fluoride Shield, Oxy Powder, I believe that all of these products will blow you away like they've done the thousands of other customers that have visited InfoWarsLife.com and believed in us and tried the products. Folks, check out InfoWarsLife.com today and the entire line of groundbreaking, cutting-edge, hardcore products. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. We're taking your phone calls, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. Questions or comments for myself or our guest, Hagman and Hagman, investigative reporters and criminal investigators, private investigators. Um, going back to Doug uh, and, and, and Joe. Joe, you've got some comments uh, on uh, the, the radical groups they're allowing into the country. I mean, Obama has been openly allowing radical Islamists and the funding out of Kenya uh, into Egypt. And, 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 and they're moving to indict a bunch of Americans over in uh, Egypt right now. I mean, this is just crazy how criminal our elites are. What's your take on that? No, you're absolutely right. They are criminal to the, to the worst extent possible. And I believe that um, ISIS, much like Al-Qaeda, you know, they're priming the pump, conditioning the American public to uh, understand that there, there is some kind of uh, attack coming, whether it is on the uh, field of the world or it's a, a cyber attack. Um, they are getting ready to do something. And I believe that, much like we saw in 9-11, that the government knows a lot of what's going on in, in the Middle East and knows a lot of the threats with the ability from the NSA to, to monitor everyone's conversations in, in real time. Um, I don't see how they could have a threat, a, a true threat, go through undetected. So I believe that a lot of this is, is the staging, the uh, getting ready for, uh, and possibly, if they needed to, the carrying out of a terrorist attack. I agree. Well, there's obvious motive by the establishment to allow attacks to happen or to actually carry them out or stage them to get more power. It's a simple equation, but it just doesn't work anymore. Chris in FEMA Region 10, I guess you're up in uh, the Pacific Northwest somewhere, Chris? Yes, sir. Hey, Alex Jones and uh, uh, Doug uh, Hagman, I really, really, and Joe, I really, really appreciate your service to the country, and I keep you guys in my prayer, so God bless you. God bless you. Um, Thank you. What I wanted to ask is, I want to talk about the misdirection um, that I that I see. I mean, we're always looking for who's responsible. Uh, we hear a lot about the British elite, the uh, Dutch elite, uh, the Rothschilds, uh, Soros, and all these guys. But where do all roads lead? It seems like all roads lead to Rome. The smallest country in the world is also the richest. The Vatican holds a quarter of the world's gold. They are at the top of the pyramid. They're controlling all these people. I just want to get your take on that. You want my take or Doug's take or Joe's take? I would love all three of your take on it. Okay, uh, Doug, you take it first. Well, I, you know, I think all roads do lead to Rome as well as, well, they've got uh, um, offshoots or interchanges in the city of London. 
as well as Washington, D.C. Uh, you know, I, look, I, I think at the bottom, at the end of the day, what they're trying to do here is create a one-world system of governance. Alex, you talk about this. You've got the one-world economy, one-world global governance. I was about to say, it's the same management technique yeah. in the city of London or in Israel or in the Vatican or in D.C. Uh, I mean, you know, that's its own district. I mean, everybody always wants to zero in on Jews or Catholics or Masons or when really, at the top, you've got corrupt people that have taken over every major organization, and I've just found it's counterproductive to sit there and say, it's the cops' fault, or it's the blacks' fault, or it's the whites' fault, or it's the Mexicans' fault, or it's the Vatican's fault. I mean, I mean, I mean, taking Catholicism, I'm not Catholic, but I've looked at it, being a newsman, there's a hundred different groups in there. They're all fighting with each other. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's true, the Vatican helped set up the EU, because it wants to run Europe. So, yeah, it, it, it is a big part of it. Uh, and I don't defend that. At the same time, though, there are a lot of Catholics out fighting the New World Order and fighting abortion who are good people. You know, I mean, I mean, it's just uh, I'm going to hold you over because I want to continue this whole Vatican discussion. It's fascinating. I should do a whole show, like like on Jews or on Vatican or on Masons or on, and then just kind of look at how. There's different groups in all these groups and how it's a globalist philosophy, a philosophy of tyranny versus a philosophy of liberty. And I'm just here promoting the philosophy of liberty, and I think we can get everybody involved in it. Back to the calls to talk about the Vatican thing the caller just brought up. I'm going to go back to him, Chris, and then take you, uh, take you to the bottom of the hour. Start getting in a hurry and start stumbling over my words. But how do you counter the ignorance of the public and, and ignorance in government as well versus those of us that are awake? I mean, we're not on some high horse saying we're real smart, but I can have discussions with billionaires, corporate people, you name it. They're so amazed that I know about fractional reserve banking or I know about basic stuff. I mean, just in business, that can make you so much more successful. How did they ever convince the public that it's dumb to be informed about how the world really works? And how do you reach out to people that are so stupid and so full of hate, they think smashing up a Christmas tree or shooting innocent cops in the head uh, is a moral activity? Well, you, uh, you said something there, you know, that not only are they not informed, but they're full of hate. And we see that, you know, through the TV and the uh, propaganda uh, on the airwaves, whether it's through visual or, or audio stimulus, that they've been able to play on emotional uh, strings of the people. And we see this a lot, too. You encounter people where you have the proof and, and the facts and you can show them to somebody and they will hate you for being the messenger or hate you for telling them the truth, not willing to look at the truth. It's it's a process that is in trying to bridge that gap of, of helping people understand the information, not just showing it to them or, or giving it to them is it, it's a hard, it's hard to do these days. You know, people are set in what they believe. And I think until the public has their own personal experience that opens their, their, their eyes or, or leads them to search for a, an answer, uh, they're not going to be open to it because there's, they've been so they are conditioned. Yeah. You know, conditioned. It's, condition shed. it's conditioning. It's probably, it's programming. It really, it, at the basis of, at the, at the root of the level, I mean, it's it's all mind control. It, it really is. Well, I mean, if a cop killed somebody in my family in cold blood and got away with it, I would do things legally and other ways of that, you know, whatever it took to get justice. But it would be against the person that did it, not against some random person in another jurisdiction. It, it, it gets down to mindless tribalism, Coke, Pepsi, Ford, Chevy, that it's just us against them. It's totally sick. I want to go back to Chris. If, if some people just joined us, Chris called in and said, hey, all roads lead to Rome. And it, you know, doesn't the Vatican run the whole planet? From my deep research, the Vatican is up to its eyeballs. Uh, in the New World Order, in setting up the Euro, uh, the founding treaty of Rome is what it's called. And what, in 1957, that really first established the EU. Uh, the Catholic Church bishops in the Southwest are pushing for open borders and, and telling illegals to come in. So I think it's seditious, but then uh, other Catholic bishops in Europe are trying to close the borders. I think it's diversified, and I'm not giving the Vatican a pass, but I'm not here Catholic bashing. My point when he said, you know, do you think the Catholic Church runs it all is, all people do is fight over who runs everything. Is it the, is it the um, Illuminati, or is it the Masons, or is it the Jews, or is it the Rockefellers, or is it uh, the... Catholic Church, and then there's all this endless fighting. Hey, 
the Federal Reserve's private. It's screwing us over. Let's get rid of it. Hey, um, I just don't get caught up. It's more divide and conquer, I found, to get into bashing one group or another. Isn't it just corruption at the top? That's my take. Chris, what is your take? I think there is a lot of diversity, and I do see a, a, a division in the Catholic Church, and I think a lot of uh, higher uh, ranking priests and bishops and cardinals are waking up to the truth. And I got to thank you for leading me back to the truth. You led me back to Christ and praise God for that. And, you know, when you look in Revelation, the great whore, the great harlot who rides atop the beast is the Catholic Church, is the Vatican. They are at the top of the pyramid right underneath Lucifer. Well, sure, I think it's I think it's state-run Christian fake. I mean, here's the issue when I'm everything the Catholic Church is doing, the Protestant churches are doing as well. They're pushing for open borders. They're saying turn your guns in. They're saying do what the government says. That's all I'm saying is when we sit there and just single out one church or one organization, I think it plays into the larger divide and conquer. Go ahead. Also, the uh, new Illuminati official website, people have done some research and tracked it back to the Vatican Church. It was created by a Jesuit uh, priest. I would love to, to hear a whole show on the Vatican. Maybe Eric John Phelps would be a guest. I know that. But, but here's the problem. Here, here, here's my problem. Okay, Phelps has said things about me that just aren't true. And, and see, th that's what I'm saying is that, and I appreciate your call, is that people make up these faux controversies. That's what I'm saying. Alex Jones works for Israel because he doesn't hate Jews. And you know, then they Photoshop you know, me at a Jewish wedding and stuff. I mean, it, it's just, when I have Jewish friends, it's, it's all the infighting that Cass Sunstein talks about generating when he was the uh, regulations are, well, well, still is, is that it just falls into this mindlessness where I've been told by people, you will come out against the Vatican and say it's the devil and the only problem or we'll expose you for working for him. Well, I don't work for the Vatican. So people that say, you know, do what we say, we're going to have an inquisition of you. It's just another form of tyranny. So that's what I, and, and, and Israel tries to play people off some of the Israel lobby and make it all about the Vatican. And the Vatican under the table does stuff blaming it all on Israel. Well, I'm not in an Israel-Vatican fight. I'm not in a black-white fight or, or a black-against-cop fight. I, I, I'm here to promote liberty. I'm here to promote freedom. I'm here to promote ideas of free market and private property and freedom of religion where you got freedom and I got freedom as long as you don't infringe on my freedom or I don't on yours. It comes down to that. That's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Cupcake in Maryland. Then we'll talk to Denise, Eleanor, George, and others to see if we have any questions for our guest. Uh, go ahead, uh, Cupcake. Well, hi there, Dollface. How are you? I'm all right. All right. I've got a question for uh, Doug and Joe. Go ahead. And, uh, you know, you can uh, uh, chime in. But uh, I've read a series of articles this past week from Dave Hodges addressing the EMP uh, uh, threat. And I'm wondering uh, how you all feel about that, uh, what your sources are telling you, uh, how likely that is. Um, and, uh, uh, and also my second question is, have you felt a significant shift, almost a paradigm shift in just the last couple of weeks? Right, well, I mean, I'll give you my take and then theirs. I, I, I'm worried about a Carrington event from the sun, not so much a foreign EMP attack. An EMP attack is something the globalists might pull. Guys, give us your take. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. I've talked to Dave Hodges a number of times this past week, in the last 10 days, uh, about his articles. It, it, our, our viewpoints differ a little bit. Uh, while we see an EMP as being a possibility to take down the grid, it more than likely, in, at least in our view, based on what we've researched, it would happen perhaps at a later time, at a later, after things have been um, really, after, after we've been really raped, pillaged, and robbed uh, here in the States. So that could come later. So that's more of a coup de grace after they've already sucked us dry, deindustrialized us, had a civil war. Right, barring, of course, uh, like a Carrington type of, of an event, uh, so, so, because there's much more wealth here to, for, to, for them, the globalists, to take. So they, they, they don't want to destroy us before they take everything from us. That's kind of my viewpoint. That's that right. It, a spider wants to suck all the juice out before he cuts the bug loose. Yeah. 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 I agree. Let's skip this network break so we get lots of calls in here and go right to the bottom of the hour with our guest. Thank you, Cupcake. Uh, let's talk to uh, Denise in FEMA Region 5. What former state are you calling in from? 
Same in Region 5, Minnesota. All right, well, welcome to the airwaves. Thank you. Listen, I pray for you every day, Alex. Thank you, sweetheart. Pray for your safety and your family. Well, believe me, I need um, it, so thank you. <laughs> Don't we all? I mean, we all do. Here's my question. <clears throat> I am wondering what's going to happen in 2015 because of the new lawsuit that's coming out against the gun manufacturers in the Sandy Hook case. Because, and the reason I say oh yeah. that is... That should open up discovery of how fake it is. Great point. Go ahead. There, there's a, there was a movie out with Gene Hackman and John Cusack, and it was called Runaway Jury. And it was a great movie, and it was about a gunman who went in and shot up an attorney's office and killed a bunch of the attorneys in the office. And what, they ended, what the wife of one of the um, injured people did was ended up going back and suing the gun manufacturer. And the movie goes into a great amount of, of how... Uh, corrupt our whole judicial system is and how they paid off jury members and all this kind of stuff. And I remember Wolfgang Helbig said one of his reasons for questioning Sandy Hook was nobody was suing. None of the parents were suing. suing. Like they did a gold That is a fight. super question. You get the gold star, I think, for the best question of the day out of a lot of excellent ones. Uh, Hagman and Hagman, give me your take on Sandy Hook and what this new lawsuit against Bushmaster means. But I'll just chime in here first. I think, uh, Alex, I think you hit the nail on the head. Of all of the criminal and civil trials we've been involved in, the, the key here is going to be the discovery phase. Let's see what that brings, if it even gets to that point. If it's not, uh, if the if the, uh, uh, if the government doesn't step in or the, the powers step in to say, no, you're not going to go there, or they put up, they, they, they quash the, the entire process. But I think it's, I think it's an excellent point that the discovery is going to be is going to be key in revealing things yet unrevealed. Yeah, and Sandy Hook. Um, I think that was, I'm not sure if it was you or another news agency that reported the FBI statistics of uh, murders in 2000. Well, the FBI's on site said none uh, in yeah. that town. Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, other examples were shown that that they counted the the massacre in Aurora and those victims in their statistics and and other uh, situations that took place. But you know, Sandy Hook has been a big a mystery for me because there's so much. I think not only disinfo but planted disinfo. Or you know, leading people down certain roads of of seeking that was done intentionally. I think. Sure. What do you guys think of Halbig? I mean, he he was a big, you know, successful, famous uh, school safety guy. Wrote the book on a lot of it. All I know is I saw Cooper with blue screen out there, green screen. Uh, I know I saw the kids doing fake you know rotations in and out of the building. They tore it down. All the unprecedented gag orders. You know the uh, police in you know, anti-terror outfits in the woods. Then they denied that that had been in the news. I mean there, something's being hidden there. You guys are on the East Coast. You have a lot of sources. What do you really think happened? Well, uh, Alex, the, the what really happened, I don't know. But I'll tell you what we what we do know, and I can speak for John this, and you can speak for himself, obviously. But what we do know is the original or the official narrative is not what really happened. Uh, I mean, look at the. <laughs> Heck, look at the behavior of the coroner when he came out. That really struck me as, as being just uh, the medical examiner there on scene. And, um, you know, uh, being a blood spatter analyst myself and uh, working with coroners, working with police, working with the uh, uh, prosecutors. I've never seen anything quite like that in my life. Yeah, we talked about computer, computer generated and false news reports. I think this was a pilot, possibly. And I'm not saying that the event didn't happen. Or it definitely didn't happen the way they reported it to. But I think this was one of the initial ways that they're learning how to manipulate news uh, coverage. You know, Very astute. That's what I said a few weeks into it. I said they may have killed real kids, but they're practicing how to propagandize and how to control the press and how to put out a product that's a fraud. When I just saw the heavy, heavy, heavy scripting, that was what was so clear. And then the parents laughing, and then one second later doing the actor breathing to cry. I mean, it just it's, it's just over the top. Agreed. Yep. Over the top sick. And we know they've staged other stuff before. I mean, they built fake villages and then didn't declassify it for about five years for Queen Elizabeth to visit in Africa.
Yeah, exactly. And, you know, a lot of this, Alex, I, I got to tell you, to me, uh, and this is a subject for another day, of course, but if you look at the satanic ritual sacrifice abuse of these of these uh, psychos in power, and, and I, I mean, obviously, that, that, that's another uh, topic for another time. But, you know, j just look at that as an overlay of, of what happened. Well, just this week, they've had in witchcraft deals, uh, two different dead kids this week. And then every time we talk about it, they go, shut up. You know, the occult doesn't kill kids. Well, it has throughout history. Absolutely. So there's also this institutional cover up uh, of child abuse, not just in the Catholic Church, but across the board. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and this we have to figure this in as a variable here, too. Um, these are called high holidays and such. I mean, there's just so many aspects to this. But, but that was a great, great question indeed. I mean, just we had a 10 year old boy mutilated and murdered just this week in a witchcraft ceremony. That was another one. I mean, this is going on. And then every time we raise it, we get attacked. I'm just reporting this stuff goes on, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you, Denise. Excellent questions. Eleanor in Missouri, you're up next. Go ahead. Thanks for holding. Hi, thank you, Alex and Doug and Joe Hagman for being who you are. Um, I just had uh, I just had a comment about the false flags and how they're staged and how they're done so badly these days. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Ole Demengard who talks about this and how it's all you know. Even they, they even choose certain colors for certain false flag events to. Um, propagandize the public and get them, uh, you know, to, you know, it's just like what Doug, Doug and Joe Hagman were saying. It's um, ritual magic that they use. And then the second thing was that um, I've been seeing shortages in the food stores, too, what Steve Quayle was talking about before. And I'm just wondering about how these food riots are like where they're going to come in. You well, know? there are record food shortages worldwide. And when that happens in a third world country, you get mass rioting because you know, half the discretionary income goes to food in most third world countries. And America is seeing massive food uh, uh, price increases. Uh, Hagman, uh, which one of you wants to take that question? Yeah, look at Venezuela and how the government had to start rationing the uh, c citizens buying groceries from uh, stores, you know, they only certain citizens were allowed to buy. I think it was a seven day worth of food at a time, and they're waiting in line for hours. I think the you know we saw the huge drought in California. Um, there is a culling or a a shortening of the herd, and and they're thinning the population through these different you know genetically modified foods. For, uh, from that to taking the nutrients and and the important minerals out of the food. And as you said, everything we've seen so far is only beta testing. That's right. But you can see it all lining up globally towards the next big phase. That's what we've got to basically discredit, sabotage, and expose peacefully as much as their operation as we can, because what it can't survive is exposure, in my experience. Yeah, exactly. And I think what we're seeing here with the food shortages today, the ground beef at 420 and a pound uh, highest on record, I think in this particular case and in certain cases here, I think what we're seeing are the birth pangs of a larger uh, economic and uh, uh, food supply disruption that, uh, you know, that will happen. That, that's my view. Absolutely. Thank you, Eleanor. Uh, and again, here, we're so spoiled on average, it's not as big a deal. But in third world, it's life and death. But but ground beef being at record prices or beef poultry at record prices across the board is a microcosm of everything. Record amounts of ranchers are going out of business because of regulations and fines and control. The, the, the big three meat packers shut down all the small operators with federal regulations the last 20 years. There are no real stockyards anymore that have real auctions. They still have them, but it's only a few major bidders there. So record beef prices, but the beef producers are going out of business. That shows how a rigged crony capitalist system is one of the worst you can live under. The opposite of a free market. It's economic tyranny. It's slavery at its finest or at its best or worst, whatever you want to call it. Gentlemen, we're out of time. We got George in Connecticut, Robert, Dan, D. I'll get to them coming up after you're gone. Um, but you got about a minute and a half for any other key intel you want to put out there for folks. I'll take 30 seconds of that. I'll tell you what, um, Alex, what we've been looking at here very closely is uh, watch Syria, watch the Middle East, watch the geopolitics of the Middle East, watch the small arms trade treaty here in this country. Obviously, you've covered that uh, or how it will affect the massive yes. gun 
administration. Uh, the key thing here over everything that we're looking at is the killing off of the U.S. dollar. That's the ultimate goal. The balkanization of America falling behind it through the uh, massive uh, illegal immigration and the blanket amnesty. Yeah. And I believe that, you know, this 2015 coming up, as I stated earlier, as, as read from so many of the, the mainstream news sites, that they're, 2015 will be the, you know, the year of the hacking, the cyber insecurity, as they call it. I would definitely keep my eyes on that and how that plays into their objectives. Um, as you pointed out, we are slaves under an economic and uh, tyrannical political uh, authoritarian type system. And... Just look for them to keep continue to push buttons and try to pull strings of the hearts of the American people to uh, shape the agenda and shape the uh, world events in the way they want them for the reactions that they want. And we have to take a step back. Every time we see something big happen, we have to take a step back and analyze it before we start trying to jump to conclusions or fit in pieces. In exactly, the and that's what I'm going to cover next. Obama creates the truth of, on his own agenda. LewRockwell.com asks why. I'm going to break that down, take your calls, talk to John Bound and more. Gentlemen, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you, Alex. Oh, Hagman and Hagman.com, that's their site. We're InfoWars.com. Stay with us.